That's why I talk so much. That's why I talk so much. Plop it in there. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Welcome back to the channel guys, Donnie D back at you. So today I got something a little bit different for you. I'm going to do a screen recording, it's the first time I'm actually doing this. So I downloaded this program, hopefully it all works out, or this will be my 15th take, but this is actually my first take right now, so we'll see how it works. So I'm going to be doing, I'm reviewing uh, another tile channel here and you might know who he is i'm not going to name him now i'm just going to kind of play it and uh put in the description who he is but um he, he's well known in, in the industry and in the tile industry and on youtube here he's got a you know a very good following and um you know i'm just going to point out in my opinion and a lot of people's opinions that would agree with me about how bad this guy is he's broadcasting the, the wrong information he doesn't go by the TCNA, which is a Tile Council of North America with most of his methods. I would say probably about 90% of what he's doing here is, is, is all wrong with his shower builds. And if you do take his advice, um, you're going to have problems in the future. So I'm just going to tell you that right now. So what I'm going to be doing is just playing the video here, um, trying to keep it short. He's got a 23 minute video. I'm going to try to keep my under 10 minutes here. I'm kind of try to pick out the parts that you know I see where he's wrong or even right. So I want to play it through and uh, go from there. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna start playing his video and uh, stop and start it and make my comments where I see fit. Let's go. Question that I get most often is. How do I do my pan corner folds? And don't you get a bump out? Yes, because you have three pieces of liner here instead of one. So yes, there's a slight bump out. Okay. Now, this is is true. You're gonna get a bump out. I would definitely not say it's slight. You're probably talking anywhere from one eighth to a quarter inch, uh, depending. Uh, what you could do is notch out the blocking that's there and tuck it back that's a good way to, to do it um, and from what I'm looking at here I'm really not 100% sure but it looks like he's using drywall screws I could be wrong but if he is that's a problem too those are going to corrode out the whole shebang and you can feel it but the wall board is flexible enough to take up for that so there'll be a small indentation I suppose for lack of a better word in from this area um, but when you spread your thin set out and you do your tile that bump out is kind of innocuous no when you, if you have a bump out there whatever size trial you use it doesn't make it doesn't make a difference if you have a bump out it's going to be a bump out period you have to flatten out the rest of the shower according to that bump so if you have small mosaics you're actually going to see a bump if you have bigger tiles you're going to build up you have to build up the whole area around the bump to bring it out to that thickness so there's no way around it if there's a bump there or a dip it's got to be addressed period this is the achilles heel when a shower fails it's usually right here in the corner left and right of the corner yeah definitely the outside corners i agree with him there is one of the most failed part of a showers and <laughs> let's see how he addresses it but i pretty much know how he's going to do it but let's just see and so a lot of people are trying to scab in another piece of uh, pan liner to fill up this gap here or they do the dam corners which is um, a preformed uh, piece of liner yeah you want to use the, the pvc glue that that's meant for these liner pans and use the outside corner piece to seal that off that's the best way to do it see then again if you look at the uh let me blow this up a little bit you can look at right here it looks to be a drywall screw. Like I said, it could be wrong, but it looks like a drywall screw. And I see this a lot, especially with plumbers. They do use these drywall screws because they're cheap. There's a reason why they're called drywall screws. They're made only for drywall, that's it. You need to use the correct screws. And in this situation, I'll use corrosion resistance screws. You can use cement board screws, your foam board screws, whatever they are. 
as long as they're corrosion resistant. That's important. The wallboard, as I said, is going to overlap all of this. The wallboard is going to get waterproof. The curb is going to get waterproof. Everything is going to be waterproofed prior to. So in the old days, before we waterproofed everything, yes, that's something to look. All right. He's making the statement that it's okay not to put the corner piece there. And I can see his point because he's using liquid membrane. He likes to use regar a lot to waterproof the whole shebang. But again, we can look up this in the book, TCNA. He's got a, a system he's using here that's called a water in, water out, traditional like pan liner type system here. And he doesn't even use a pre-slope as far as I know. So that's a big no-no right there. Like I said, the way he's doing it is wrong completely wrong you have to have the water in water out system and use that by itself or just a liquid topical membrane on the surface of the mortar bed and that's it you don't want to mix them okay i'll try to make this short here but when you have your pan liner your pre-slope is under here your pan liner then your mortar bed on top to get the slope to the drain again and then you set your towel to that but he's not just doing that that's, that's your water in, water out system. He's got the pan line, the mortar bed, and then he's putting red guard under that. And you have waterproof and membrane here, waterproof and mem membrane here, and you got an inch to two, sometimes three inches of, of mortar right there. And that's called your mold sandwich, okay? That is what you don't want. This system is not made for that. You gotta do one or the other. And you can see right here in these, uh, where it makes the curb, how much build out that is right there. I mean, for a tall guy, a 16th or an 8th is a football field. So that, that's just, that's not going to fly. <laughs> this system with the more water in, water out is really best for when, you, when you're floating the walls, meaning you do your mortar bed on the base, but you also do your mortar on the walls. Now, this is still done a lot in California, not so much where I'm at here in Jersey. It's very labor intensive, but you get everything perfectly plumb, square, flat, the whole shebang. And, and you know when you have this bump out here you can make it up difference make the difference up with your uh fluid at wool so that's that's what worked the best floorboard goes no everywhere. no no and if you're a tall guy like me and you do watch this video which you know most real tall guys get sick of it and turn them off but you're, you're pulling out your head <laughs> i'm sorry you're pulling out your hair huh <laughs> the other question i get how far does my drain go up for the proper slope Quarter inch per foot is minimal. That's a plumbing code for an old. Okay, to answer that question shortly is uh, when you're using your mortar bed, a lot of the manufacturers will have your minimum amount, but usually under the drain, you want anywhere from three quarter inches or more. So a lot of times I'll aim for an inch. You can go inch, inch and a quarter, but you remember the more thickness you have at the drain, the more you have to have at the perimeter, you get that slope. So depending how big the shower is you can make your judgment but you don't we really don't want to go less than three quarter and you want to aim most times for about an inch as long as you have the uh you know the, it's not going to bury the curb we don't want to have a tiny quarter inch sliver at the curb you want to make sure you got a good solid piece there well, you're trying to get the quarter inch per foot but again that's minimal um, i'm not measuring the quarter inch per foot i'm looking at my bubble going that direction as much as possible see <laughs> That is completely, completely wrong, okay? He's just eyeing it up with the level. That is completely wrong. The best way to get the pitch per foot is, let's say you got an inch at the drain and it's two feet from the wall, okay? So you need a quarter inch per foot, okay? So you're gonna need a half inch higher at the wall than at the drain. So how much do you need to be at the wall? Let's say the drain is an inch off the floor and over here, we're two feet away, a half inch per foot. So you had a quarter and a quarter, you had a half inch, you need an inch and a half at the wall. The easiest way for I find to do is, is mark a line on the wall, take some spaces, a tile, whatever it's going to be that's going to add up to that half inch and make the level level between your mark on the wall and the drain. That's the easiest way to do it. So not eyeing, eyeing things up and just going by... You know, giggles here is is not accurate at all. Yeah, he'll he'll have a pitch, but you might have a pitch either too little or too much. I mean, too little, the water is not going to drain great. Too much is it's not going to be comfortable to stand on. Period.
one thing you got you got to remember too when you're marking that line and coming off the floor the floor usually is not going to be dead on level okay so it might be different from the drain so what you want to do is you want to find the furthest point from the drain okay that's in level with the drain that's not lower because it'll affect the measurement that's important which like i said the best easiest way to do is get a rough line at the wall okay put your mud there or your your, your uh, ledger or your scree ledgers whatever you do you, you see if you watch my videos a lot you like to, I, I like to put a piece of foam at the wall screw it in at my rough height and then check it put my level on there put my gauge on top of the drain which is spacers or, or tile to get the half inch and make the level level or slightly slightly more so you have a little bit of pitch whatever you want but you definitely want to be at the minimum quarter inch per foot so i currently have four bags of mortar and i mix two at a time and i slop it in there then i mix another two slop it in there and all right so the terminology you're using just slop it in there that's kind of diy handyman type talk you don't you don't slop the mortar in you, you pack the mud okay most hollow guys say i want to pack the pan we're going to float it going to screed it one of those we don't slop it in okay that's why i talk so much roughly about an hour sometimes if they're smaller okay time to to, to uh pack your pan okay pack your shower base screed it float it <laughs> whatever term you want to use just don't use slop um, that's going to vary, you know, maybe the job is, the shower is on the third floor, you got to hold the mud up. You know, there's, there's a lot of variables, but if, as far as actually doing the work, once everything is mixed and you can start floating, you got everything prepped, ready to go, yeah, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a half hour, it can take an hour and a half, it really depends on the size of the uh, shower base, but all the other stuff that has to do with it, the prep with it, that actually takes more, if not this it takes about the same if not it takes about the same if not more time to do that prep part than it does actually uh packing the pan in there uh packing the pan here and then this whole surface gets waterproofed and well the whole shower gets waterproofed including the curb and i put yeah and again doing a liquid on top of a traditional pan liner is completely wrong you're gonna have a mold sandwich you're not do it like this folks please and then tomorrow i'll do a silicone white bead of silicone all the way around here so that definitively then the red guard will overlap on the silicone definitively no water will get in because this to me okay this is all unnecessary things here okay he's putting thin set on top of the mortar bed it, it's not gonna it's yeah it, it'll it'll seal up the mortar bed and make it smoother and make a nice service for the liquid but it's not needed okay not needed then really what i'm seeing what he's doing here is he's taking silicone go around the edge of the drain completely unnecessary he's doing that because he's in two different systems it's it's all combined it's all wrong here there's no need to put silicone around the perimeter of the drain before the tile plus what you're doing there because he's going to be getting the silicone definitely on the shower base here a little bit at least a quarter to three quarters inch that's going to spread out when he wipes it with his finger that's a complete bond breaker. This, the, the mortar, the uh, the thin set mortar will not bond to that at all. So let me show you. Okay. So there's, because I have screws in the middle here, there's a little small bump out on that right side. Small? There's a little small <laughs> bump out on that left side. And then between those more like a quarter inch bump out it's, it's horrible for a towel guy that's like i said that's an ab absolute football field there completely this guy exaggerates you know you know gaps that are half inch saying they're inch and then under exaggerates small gaps it's he's completely opposite what is with his terminology here just <laughs> crazy when i screw up my thin set it takes care of that gap so and one thing to point out right here on the video is using drywall on the shower the only system that's actually that the manufacturer allows drywall in a shower for is sluter if you're going to wrap the whole thing with their sluter curdy membrane thin set that bad boy on i've done plenty of showers that way with drywall no problems at all been back to jobs five seven years later no issues but 
The way he's doing it with liquid over the drywall, which we'll get to at some point, no good. Yeah, don't do a water in, water out system if you're gonna be doing a topical membrane like he's doing here, which is red guard or liquid or a sheet membrane. You don't need to use the line at all. And that drain, you won't use that. Use a scooter drain, one of those new flow excesses, uh, ladder creep, there's plenty of bonding drains you can use. Green board, which is gypsum, then yes, I used I use drywall mud. Huh? Drywall. Drywall compound and shower is no number one. Even though he's putting the waterproof over it, you really don't want the main showers. Maybe on the real outside by where the shower doors are, as long as you're going over with your waterproof, that might be okay. It's not gonna see too much water. But period, like you're not supposed to be putting drywall in a shower and putting liquid over it. It's, it's not made for you. Can you can look it up on Customs website. Pull up the PDF. You know they don't allow the, their liquid to go over a drywall in a shower. It's not an improved method at all. When you put the tile on, that is not your first line of defense against water. Sorry, that is not your only defense against water. Your yes, correct. Now tile just is water resistant. It is porous. Porcelain is very minimal to, to uh, porous. Ceramics a little bit more porous, but either way, water gets through tile and grout. Waterproofer is even if you were using curdy, right? If you put all that and they call for sheetrock. So if you were to use curdy on sheetrock, would they? No, he calls it curdy. Sluder doesn't call for sheetrock. It's just an improved substrate that they allow. You can use their curdy board, drywall, cement board. You know most backer materials that are on the on the market and go over it with curdy, and you should be fine. And another thing to point out, when you do. Drywall in a shower, if you're going to use drywall compound over it, which you don't have to because you're going to be using curry, you don't have to tape the seams or nothing because curry is going to act as the tape. If you're going to do that, you have to prime the walls first with paint, a primer, before you uh, set the curry on it. And the main reason for that is once you get the drywall compound wet with the thin set, it actually re emulsifies, turn the liquid again. And you don't want that mixed around with the thin set that's going to bond to the wall there. Um, so whether it's Curry, Aqua Defense, Hydro Band, A plus nine, uh, Red Guard, it doesn't really matter. That's the end of the day. The mantra is waterproof your shower before you tile. And that's all I have to say. I promise this is the last piece of advice. I just have to be able to. Yes, it's got to be waterproof before tile. Otherwise, you're going to have a flood. So. Um, I grout my floor before I ever start doing my wall tile. Now I see a lot of guys do that actually. Um, maybe they're wor worried about the waterproofing getting damaged. I don't see the need for it. Um, it's going to have thin set full on it. At some point it's going to get dirty. Uh, I'd rather just grout the whole shower one shot instead of waiting a day and the whole shebang. So I don't see the point of it honestly. Enjoy that video and you learn something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos I make. This guy is always asking for handouts, always asking for money. You know the reason why is from what I've heard, if he, he's even said on his channel before, is that he got demonetized. So there's got to be a reason for that. So he's still asking for money from people. And, you know, there's a reason why the guy got demonetized. So, like I said, no good. Let's check out his channel. So here's his Hi, channel. welcome to my channel. I'm Bob Doyle and... Bob. So, he, he's got a good file. Like I said, he's got 31 million views, 455 videos. He's been doing it for a while. Doing good. But, like I said, guys, if, if you're going to follow this guy, do, do not take his, his advice at all. I mean, especially for when he's building showers. I, I haven't seen him set much tile in the times I have. It's, it's, it's wrong um, the way he's prepping his showers for sure I know is all incorrect so if you are gonna watch his channel just laugh that's all I gotta say so um, that's all I got for you right now this is my first time doing this type of content if you guys like these type of videos please let me know I'll continue to try to make these or review other tile channels you know point out things they're doing good things are doing bad my opinion whatever it is and that's it so like i said 
Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.